I'm Alan Adamson, co-founder of Metaphors, and you've been listening to Your Beautiful Day on the Gratitude Network. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the special simulcast of Your Beautiful Day on the Gratitude Radio Network and the Neil Haley Show. And I'm excited to welcome to the program my co-host, Pearl Sharenza. Pearl, how are you? And Pearl, again, we have done a lot of recordings to end the year. It's a great way to end it, especially with how crazy our 2020 is. And if you would have told me last year, I was going to be on camera so many times. I've done television. I'm on TV studio out in Pittsburgh. I go to sometimes that I would go and finally venture into doing video, not just audio radio. You would have, I would have told you I was crazy, but I feel much more comfortable after all of 2020 and Pearl introduce our guest, please. I totally agree with you. Who would have thought we would be doing a lot of this at the end of the year and, and via zoom and all this great, technology we have. So I am excited. My name is Pearl Sharanza and I'm with Women's Successful Living and I'm also part of the Gratitude Radio Network and I'm excited for the subject we're about to bring you because this is a subject that I think even myself as a business owner is very intrigued by. So today we are excited to bring you the co-founder and managing partner of marketing for Metaphors and Alan Adamson is going to be sharing with some of us with us some of the great information that we all need to hear about. So welcome Alan. Thanks for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. Hey, Alan, appreciate it very, very much. And we'll let Pearl have the first question. So, Alan, with everything that's happening this year with COVID and everything that we've all heard, the, the big word is pivot, right? So tell us in what you've been seeing this year. What's been the biggest change you've seen with COVID that business owners and marketing has taken an approach on? Well, it's gone right to the heart of why companies have struggled to change. I Before this pandemic, I wrote a book called Shift Ahead, which looked at why everyone talks about staying relevant and not becoming your father's ultimate. But very few firms did it. So a, a crisis is an a, a important way to get companies to say, I, I can't just think about what I might want to do, because most companies are very comfortable in doing what they did yesterday. And this year eliminated that option for many people. So they had to finally get real about, gee, what I did yesterday can't really work tomorrow. I got to think of something else. So I think you're going to see much more innovation. But you know, it, for many companies, it's going to be really tough because they're so used to looking backwards and doing what they have done versus looking forward and saying, exactly. now what? And that's the whole thing of reinvention. If you're a business owner, you need to reinvent just not just with the pandemic, as you said, always looking to differentiate yourself from your competition, to make yourself look and feel and develop and always grow to another level. If it's something you're not, you can't just, you have to make a lot of self checks as a business, right? Exactly. You, you, uh, oftentimes business owners were very internally focused, you know, get into the office, answer emails, talk to people inside. They lost some of what they started with when they started the business, which is looking at customers, seeing what's going on, <laughs> listening to people and saying, gee, you know, if you're in business, you got to be solving problems. If you're not solving problems, you're not going to be a, in a successful business. I, I totally agree with you. It's like that, you know, you often hear the, the phrase working in your business instead of on your business, right? And so I remember over 20 years ago when I was in the mortgage world, sitting in a sales meeting and the owner of the company's like, listen, we're all going to be virtual soon. So we need to start preparing for it. And that was almost 20 years ago. And so here we are now, you know, and myself as a business owner, I'm looking, always looking, okay, how can I reach more people? And the pandemic really sort of pushed me to have to do more virtual. Yeah, uh, most people, you know, said, most people tr treated planning for tomorrow uh, with, oh, we'll do that on Thursday. We'll worry about next year. Uh, now, uh, people are waking up Monday morning nervous that they better start being digital. How do they talk to their customers on Zoom? How do they, you know, what problems, how do they, how do they solve problems that they never thought they could solve before? And some companies, of course, as you know, are, are lucky. I just saw an ad uh, on TV today for Warby Parker, and it talks about how you can buy glasses at home. You know, they saw the future coming, so they are perfectly situated, you know, to, 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 to not only survive, but thrive in this. But most companies didn't go digital didn't go virtual until there was no choice. And they're not ready for it. And that's the thing, Alan, that once you are forced into this, 
And you don't want the people in 2021, but everyone, even if they're thinking we're going to go back to normal, need to really think about online marketing and look at things, how we are running our business in this world when another pandemic could hit, another issue could hit. Yeah, and- I, I think that's the biggest risk that most companies need to be careful of. You just pinned it down, which is, oh, you know, once we get the vaccine, everything is going to go back to normal. Sure, exactly. And the reality is people are used to working from home. They're not going to run yes. back to the office. People are used to doing Zoom meetings. They're not going to jump on airplanes that quickly, even if it's safe to fly. Uh, so I think people need to think that tomorrow is going to be very different and and better think about their business that way. Because the families have learned now, why are you going to take my husband or wife away for two weeks of when we, he, he could do all these as Zoom. What's the difference of going face-to-face to somebody versus Zoom? Why are you going to have to travel all these conferences if we could just do it virtually? And exactly. that's things that they're not, people are not having those conversations, Alan, at all. Yeah, it's definitely going to be real. Just because before, if, if I were talking to a prospect and I said, look, I, you know, I'm not going to fly out to Denver. Let's just do a quick Zoom meeting. I might as well have, you know, Give it up. Yeah, give it up because they would have said, what, are you crazy? Now, you know, before I fly out to Denver for the day to meet somebody for an hour, well, I'm certainly going to suggest we do a Zoom meeting and it's going to be socially more acceptable. So, yeah, let's, let's talk. Same with conferences, same with knowledge, same with many, many things. Uh, this is going to force it forward. Love that point. Go ahead, Pearl. So, I, I, you know, I've been seeing a lot about the Zoom and like you said about the vaccination. Everybody, I, mean, I think I heard it three times today in different meetings I was on. Oh, the vaccine, it's going to put us back to normal. What are, what are some of the things that you are seeing or should a business owner like myself and others that are listening, what, what are you, what is the number one tool that they could start preparing for in setting themselves apart from everybody else that's into the Zoom? Because now I'm, I'm hearing a lot you know, well, Zoom is getting old or video is getting old. How can you set yourself apart from that to make your, you know, your meetings more enticing to attend? You know, I think you need to start thinking about two things. One is that experiences matter. So, you know, most people got on Zoom and at first it was sort of cute in March and April. And, <laughs> you know, they couldn't get the, the voice working and the lighting was bad and, and they were staring at the wrong part of the screen. I, you know, I think, you know, when you went to a meeting, you wouldn't walk into a meeting and not know how to plug in your projector and, you know, get in front of the conference table and talk. I think now if you're not fluent in Zoom or Microsoft Teams, if you're not projecting right. confidence, if you don't know how to share content, in a video format, if you think it's the same as sharing content in a conference room, um, I think you know you need to realize you're now competing more against broadcast television than you are against the traditional person getting in front of a room with a hundred-page PowerPoint deck, which was deadly before. But on Zoom, it's even more deadly. Um, and how do you how do you how do you think of yourself as a as a broadcaster, not just as a I'm here to talk about my company. Yeah, because you can make up and do flubs in front of people at a conference and have a conversation, but you have to keep them more and more engaged online than ever so that they don't get caught up in doing something else. Right, because now if you're in a conference, you're stuck there. You have to listen to the person. Yeah, maybe you can look down at your cell phone, but when you're on a Zoom call, you you better realize you have 8, 10, 12 seconds to start saying something worthwhile or you're out of business. People are going to double click and move on. Great point. Yeah, that's so true. I had um, I'm part of a company. It's it's I'm an unfranchised owner with a company called Market America, and we had our huge conference um, over the summer where people they come in from you know out of the all over the world, and so everyone's like, "There's no way you could do it online." And they pulled off the most amazing Zoom conference. And like you just said, Alan, I was like, "Man, can we just do them all like this all the time? I don't have to leave for three or four days. My family, you know, it was really awesome." And I, it was sort of like right after the um, some of the debates, and it's like we didn't lose connection or anything. So they really s- took themselves and set themselves apart. And like you just said, I'm helping somebody do a conference in a couple of weeks, and she had all these PowerPoint slides. And I was like, "You have way too many PowerPoint slides. People are going to unclick us. They're not going to watch. You have to be more engaging." Exactly. So- you have to treat it more like um, I did a. Con- I went to a conference uh, that I used to attend in person, as you just said. And it was more like watching CNN or, you know, uh, or CNBC, where you cut away to this video, you cut here. It was produced really slickly uh, and it was engaging versus a traditional walk up to the stage. A person has trouble plugging in their laptop and 
and you, you're just you're no longer forced to to digest information that way. And it'll be interesting to look at the trade shows of the world. Alan, do you think that the trade show show industry is going to lead to more and more online marketing? And that let's just let's just go talk traditional business. But I'm sure you want to talk different. There's different things. There's the there's different ways. But let's just talk about the specific traditional companies that have trade shows that go to the trade shows to network and meet with people. Do you feel that that will, that industry will ever recover, or do you think it's going to have to shift, or do you think it's going to become more and more companies are going to spend money on online marketing versus that traditional way that they were meeting and I, developing stuff? I think like everything else, most some of the big shows will survive and have to reinvent themselves. But anything that wasn't top top five are going to really struggle. And I do think he's, what you see happening at, at the Cisco's and the IBM's and the Adobe's is they are reimagining their, their go-to-market. It used to be to attend lots of trade shows. Now they are becoming like broad. Every sales team is creating a ton of content and figuring out how to serve it up in not in a you put it up and people will come yeah but it's got to be far more engaging and far more one-on-one and what you find out is you can target your customer much easier you can do so many things that everyone knew about but yet we're fearful to try meaning the amount of money spent going to a trade show for a company that might spend 10 20 50 hundred thousand dollars that trade show did they get an roi at all alan you exactly. Can. A lot of people were floating there who, who, you know, were just there because it was tradition and not the right people. And you, you need to be smart about it because now you can be. I'm always, jo- you know, joking with my, my kids. How did when I'm when I'm watching Netflix I'm, you know, with Hulu, I'm seeing different ads than my kids. <laughs> and, you know, you, you and I see, boy, how do they know I, I, I'm looking at, you know, interested in a car now? You can know you can be more targeted. And if you don't, you're also going to find yourself being your father's Oldsmobile. Okay, go ahead. Next question, Pearl. That's awesome. So what are you, are you seeing a lot, Alan, when, uh, in your book, everything you talked about, the shift that executives are having to make. Um, what are you seeing some of the, the executives having to shift to and what challenges do you see them having over the next, say, year? Well, I, I still think, you know, anytime you look at shifting, you, you find that People fail for a couple of re- One, they started too late. Now the pandemic has pushed a lot of people in. They, they're too late, but they better catch up. Uh, but the other big reason is that they're not good at, at a certain thing. <laughs> and ultimately, no matter what you try to do, as you pick out your choices and how you want to move your business, you still have to pick something that you are good at. <laughs> because if you're only exactly. average, average is over in every business. More and more, it used to be that yeah, you know, if you had an okay website and okay, it was all right. But now in the world of no one shares ordinary, average is over, you, you, you're better off picking one or two things you can be extraordinary at and just doing that than trying to be okay at four things in average. So, you know, if it's going to be a customer service, don't just say, oh, we can return things. You got to figure out a way to be better in customer service. If it's going to be, you know, understanding your target, you just can't be okay and understand. You got to be better. So make sure as you think about what to do, try to do less and try to stick to something that you have a natural tendency to be good at or can get the talent in to be good at. Do you think, Alan, your expertise level is in the more the executive world? What would you say the kind of companies you're looking at when you're talking about executives in the shift? Are you talking about just large businesses or are you looking at small businesses when you talk about this as well? No, I think that the, I, I think small and large, you know, what's 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 happening with the pandemic, it's leveled the playing field. When you're in a Zoom call, you're not sure. Yeah, yes, if if you're dealing with a big billion dollar company, but everyone has to be small because customers expect personalized experience yes consumers expect amazon to talk to them directly and if they don't want to you know repackage you know so people are expecting personal treatment and you know i think small companies have an advantage because they can deliver that uh and big companies need to learn how to be small interesting that's a a good yeah that's that and you know it's interesting you say that because you know as a small company myself excuse me you know, I'm always trying to find a way to how to touch them differently than my competition, whether they're small or big, right? And so yep. I, that's, that's, and that's a struggle sometimes is how to figure out what is that, you know? Yeah. How do you- and, and don't, 
and don't try to copy. The other thing we find mm -hmm. is don't try to yeah. just do it, what big companies do. Do what only a small company do. and it, pick one or two things that that are that are on the experience that will be different. I, I love the Chewy story. I'm sure you've heard about the Chewy. You know, when you, when you order the wrong food for your dog or your wrong bed, you call them up and they don't just say, oh, just mail it back. We'll send you a return label. They say, no, you know, give it to your neighbor who has a cat or has a dog and give it away as a gift. We'll send you the right one. And, you know, perhaps the cost difference is not that much in terms of restocking, right. but that little that little personalized touch to do something different than the entire category of emailing your return label has helped Chewy stand out or them sending you birthday cards from your dog on your birthday. You know, be creative, I think, is the best strategy. Um, and if, if everyone is doing it, as you started off, Neil, saying it's, it's not going to be different if you just do it almost as well. Yeah, you have to really, is, so differentiation is such an important thing. And figuring out your customer. Alan, how much is that? So that's where I talked about the trade shows, really did not identify the right customer that's going to go out and purchase that product or find the right distributor that's going to buy your product compared to the online experience of targeting, marketing throughout the time, providing more times to to have face-to-face -face interaction with people than one trade show a year or two trade shows a year. So that's where every company needs to look at their differentiation and figure out who really their customer is. Because right. and, people don't and, get and they often won't tell you their problem as most people. They'll just say, well, they'll just tell you what the category norm is. But the best marketers are really good at observing, gee, you know, why are they, you know, you ever wonder why, you know, this happens and you just have to take a fresh eye, which of course the pandemic has forced people to do and looking at behavior and saying, gee, where's, you know, where are the friction points? And, you know, if I ask you what's wrong with my service, people say it's all right. They're not going to tell you that, gee, I have trouble opening this or doing that, or you're, I waited too long on hold. They, they, you know, most customers don't want to criticize you. So you got to pull it out of them. If you're going to, what about if I did this, would that help? Or are you struggling with this? You have to be a good interviewer to be good at customer service. And most people are just hoping their customers will tell them the answer, but they never do. Tell them never. All right, Pearl, next question. No, that's so true. I always like, going, you know, thinking about how can I do it better? And, you know, and I used to be customer service. So it was always like, you know, how can you take care of that situation better? So speaking of customer service and, and the, 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 pivot that we're doing. I hate that word pivot. I'm, that pivot's getting so old. But what what are you seeing that's coming down? What will you predict over the next year with the change, you know, this vaccine? Is there anything particular you you are looking to happen or you're hoping that starts coming down the pipe? Well, I, I think, you know, uh, when people come out of this and they will, there will be a, some pent up demand to get out. <laughs> so to, despite the fact that I said, I agree with you, Neil, that trade shows are going to be empty, but you know, after well, somebody's been cooped it, up yeah. for a year, even going to a trade show about toothbrushes might be interesting. <laughs> but the ROI <laughs> you know? will be the big thing. They'll be looking more at an IRI ROI after that. Right. Because that's yeah. what they did before. But, so there'll be the, the explosion of I'm free to get out. But after that, I think they'll settle into somewhere between going to every trade show or going to none. And just looking at each one and say, what are they, what's the value? What am I going to get? How important is this customer? And I think it will, it, it's going to help many people focus because success in business, as everyone knows, is about not about a lot of people have the same great idea at the same time. It's the one who executes it well. And to execute well, you have to focus on a few things and do them well or better than everyone else, not try to, oh, we do this too. The, the uh, personal, you know, peeve of mine is that when you ask people what makes you successful oh we do this we do that we do you know anyone who can solve every problem probably can't solve anyone really well okay so we jumped to all those different things alan why should people pur purchase your book give us the why the why is that um while everyone thinks shifting ahead is easy you know most people fail for all the you know many many reasons so just looking back even before the pandemic you know, companies were dropping every you know, two years ago. You went, went through the Wall Street Journal every day. There was another Radio Shack goes away. Sears goes away. And it wasn't because there were not smart people there. You know, it was because there are many, many more ways to fail than to succeed. <laughs> and to succeed is about getting it exactly right. So there are lots of great stories about uh, it just realizing human nature is to is to is to 
is to stay in in park. People are nervous. The more successful your business, the more yes. risk averse you become. That's great. Great point. I never thought of the shift being such a challenge. It's not been for me, but honestly, uh, reflection is an important thing in that business every week or every month to really reflect. And if you can't identify everything and see where are you going and lots of them can't even figure out the customer. So that's the other problem, Alan, is you're talking about big businesses that have the funding, the, the power, but all these small businesses just started that don't really see the what the why of why they're doing the business. They need to shift on a daily basis. Yeah, and, and you have to, yeah. Because if you don't, you have to assume that when you do something, you're not going to get it exactly right the first time. And you have to leave yourself two or three times uh, to get it right. One of my favorite shows is how I built this uh, on NPR about entrepreneurs. And whether you listen to the founder of Peloton or whatever the founders, they didn't get it right on the first try. Right. You know, they got it right on the fourth or fifth or sixth try. So, you know, you better start trying sooner because you're going to have to iterate. Don't assume that you can think about things. Most people do a lot of planning. And then when they're ready to make the big move, they make the big move. But and they assume it's going to magically work. I think you need to assume that it's going to partially work, and you better have act two, act three, act four, and you better have the gas tank and the enthusiasm and energy to keep at it because rarely do you take the first swing when you pick up a bat and do you hit the ball look at, at the, all or hit it out of the park. We look at all the successes, Alan, in life. They took a long time to hit that 60 at, at a certain age to yeah. reach their pinnacle in businesses as well. Right. It's not, it's not an overnight success. There's no such thing as an overnight success. And there's no such thing as always success, right. never losing, never having a loss. Right. And so you have to be a bit, you know, back to the famous quote from the uh, founder of Intel, only the paranoid survive. You have to be assuming that while you were okay today, you're in trouble tomorrow. And you have to start figuring out that your business is going to change. Now, the pandemic has changed everyone's business. So everyone is at the same starting line. But you have to be pretty aggressive and saying, all right, I, I survived the summer, but the summer is not going to be the same as a fall. And I survived the winter. And next year, you know, I, I just think you need to be much more comfortable with constantly looking at things with fresh eyes and being prepared to try something and make it better as best you can, but make it better the next time. Don't just sit there and, you know, contemplate and make the master plan. This is not an invasion of Normandy. You, you know, your you know, business is not just planning for two years and then landing on the beach. Successful business today in this environment is, is much more of let's try it. Let's learn. Let's go on and try something else. Okay. Or Pearl, optimize it. Okay. Pearl, last question for Alan. No, this has been such amazing. This has been tons of information. So Alan, we always like to ask the question, and I'm sure you've got quite a few and I've been hearing them just today, but can you share a moment of gratitude with us that you have had? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Every day I wake up and I realize I'm in the business of sharing ideas and creativity and ideas, you know, um, are more important than ever. And I, I, I'm lucky to be able to continue to work during this very really challenging time when lots of people, no matter how much they try or just, uh, they just have to suffer and make it through this. So I'm lucky I'm healthy and mode of gratitude that I can do what I do not that much differently than I did a year ago or three years ago. That's awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Well, fantastic. Thanks again. Thanks uh, for inviting me. All right, uh, Alan, just stay on the line for one more second after we let you go. And then we, uh, so we can talk off air. All right, guys, that was again, the Neil Haley show and your beautiful day on the gratitude radio network. Take care.